Just when you thought it was time for the Nick's Indestructible Boot video I've been teasing for like three months um, was gonna air today. Uh, we're doing a Q&A instead because we need a little bit more time to edit that video and get it just right because it's by far the most ambitious and over the top video I've ever done. It's, been, it's, take, it's taken probably 10 times as long as any other video to make. So we're gonna do a Q&A. Because it's been a while since we've done one and I wanted to do a little more content that's not quite as formal and answer some questions on occasion. And this Q&A is sponsored by Squarespace. It's one of the best ways to take your hobby or your passion that you've been working on and get it online. So thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. And now let's start with question number one. Do you have a favorite memory of Toaster? Um, when I very first got him, we we picked him up in the car and he we thought he was just gonna chill in the car with us, but instead he climbed up into the dashboard and got stuck in the dashboard. That was super annoying. It's kind of scary. Um, another, a lot of times he'll get, he likes climbing on stuff. So he'll get in the rafters of the shop and the previous shop. And sometimes he'll get stranded up there and we have to get a ladder to, to save him. One of my more recent favorite and gross things that happened with toasters were at my apartment and he's falling off the dresser. And as he's sliding off, he was straining kind of like Mufasa in the Lion King and projectile pooped all over the place from straining. But it was funny, but also disgusting. Can you do a comparison between men and women's boots? I really want to because I've heard a lot of women's boots, their quality is inferior to the men's boots because they know women are buying boots more often and not using them as much for work, but they're still charging the same price. So it'll be a really interesting one to maybe expose some um, sexism potentially in some boot industry or some boot companies. Any updates on the Rose Anvil sneaker project? Um, <clears throat> yeah, it's in the works. Um, I'm talking to a company about making it and trying to figure out how to release it and make it different enough that it's, I'm not just repeating what other people are doing. How many employees do I have? So um, for those of you who don't know, I'm the sole owner of the business. I started it in 2015-ish in my apartment at college because I just bought a hide of leather and wanted to make some stuff. And then five years later, here we are. Um, and a lot of people think that we're this huge company and that I have tons of employees and that I'm more professional than what I am. But in all reality, it's literally just me and four of my friends that run this entire business. And so a lot of times people just assume we're this giant company and it's literally just me and my friends trying to make this thing work and make YouTube videos and products and have fun for the most part. What was your initial creative direction and purpose for the channel and how has that direction changed? That's a pretty interesting question. Um, so we initial, I initially started the, the channel a few years ago because my brother was doing a school project and part of the school project was to help me start a YouTube channel. So we made four or five videos together. And then once that semester's over, we kind of dropped it because we got some traction, but nothing crazy. And I did a few videos here and there. And then what really started the channel was just over a year ago, my buddy Zach from Jerry Rig Everything, um, he's a college buddy of mine. He asked me to make his wedding ring. He was gonna come up and film me making the ring and so I was like I better try to capitalize this on he's got like five million su subscribers so I made some videos to try to capture anybody coming from his channel to mine and um, as I was talking to him about that and kind of the strategy of YouTube he he gave me the advice of do exactly what he does but in a new way with my industry or like the leather industry so what he does is he tears apart phones and reviews them from the inside and like how the components all work and what they are so i was like how can i do that with leather the first thing that came to mind was boots because boots are one of those things where you don't know what's inside of it unless you literally cut it in half or unless the company shows you what's inside and so that's i started i reviewed a pair of some doc martens and then cut one in half and that blew up and I love boots. And so I was like, this clearly works. This is fun. I like cutting boots in half. I'll just cut boots in half. And then here we are a year later and gone from 200 or 2,500 subscribers up past 250,000. I think we're like 287,000 right now, all from cutting boots in half, which is really kind of wild. Um, the other part of that question, will you ever highlight the products Roseanville sells online? Um, will I ever cut apart my own products? Probably I'm trying to convince Nix to make me my own like a collaboration boot of the indestructible boot But kind of more domesticated more for casual wear It's something you can wear every day and not be wearing around a five pound boot um, I want to do when I do that type of thing or like when I do my ultimate sneaker I want to cut those in half. So I'll probably do that as for reviewing my own products on the channel There's not a whole lot to review and it feels a little weird and like self-serving if I was like the best wallet in the entire world and it's my wallet 
be kind of weird. But I do want to start adding in product highlights, even if it's 15 seconds into each video, because we'll get emails all the time and people be like, hey, where do, who do you recommend for a nice wallet or a nice belt? And I'm like, other than us? And like, it's because most, most people don't know all the other other aspects of the business, including the product side. So I want to do more product highlights is what I'm saying on videos. Kind of a long answer to your question. <laughs> What's your favorite video you've done so far since starting the boot slash shoe videos? Probably the common projects was the most fun because there was so much mystery behind it. And I didn't know anything about Italian made high end sneakers until I cut that one apart. And I got kind of ridiculed in Reddit uh, forums for it. And then through doing the white sneaker series, I feel like a lot of those points that they were saying I was wrong about kind of got disproven. And so that whole journey of like the white sneaker series is probably um, the most exciting, the most up and down and frustrating but exciting series I've done. And thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Squarespace is by far the easiest way to make a website. Whether you're working on a leatherworking business, a boot company, or you just want a website for you and your friends or a, a blog or whatever you happen to need, Squarespace is the way to do it because everything on Squarespace is so easy to do. It's super intuitive. You just a lot of drag and drop features. So instead of needing to know code and know all the back end of a website, it's about as user friendly as it gets. And it's literally something that you can set up in a day. It's easy to do and you have access to so many tools and features that would cost hundreds otherwise. For instance, their analytics are really handy. You can see how long people are staying on your website and when they're leaving, what pages they're going to so that you can optimize your website to keep people around. They've Got a really great integrated email campaign launcher so instead of paying a second party to launch your emails it's built right into your website so you're paying with single fee for your website and your email campaign campaign so you can reach out to people more effectively and more efficiently so if you're considering starting a website a blog um, designing a product squarespace is the number one way to get that product online it's the easiest way to do it the most effective way to do it and the, the way to the best way to make it look nice because you could have your uncle code you a website, but it's gonna look like he coded it in 1995. So go to squarespace.com slash Rosanville for a free trial. You can design your own website without any commitment. And then when you're ready to launch it, ready to make that next step in your passion or your hobby, and save 10% off of your first purchase of a website or domain with the code Rosanville. Are you gonna continue the wallet review series? Um, maybe eventually. Um, it's kind, of it kind of a hard thing to do because they don't get as many views and they also upset a lot of people. A lot of people don't like to have their hard work cut apart on YouTube and some of some people, none of the people I've reviewed, everyone I've reviewed has been great, but there were just some people who maybe saw, saw it from a different perspective than I saw. I thought by reviewing handmade wallets and comparing them to mass produced wallets, it would expose those mass produced wallets for what they are and show in very clear contrast why a handmade wallet is so much better and what makes it better but it just caused a lot of drama and it just i don't know it, i'll probably do another wallet review i want to do like a gucci wallet or like a prada wallet or something i'll probably do one of those eventually will you do any more mock toe reviews yeah um next october mocktober too how do you decide on videos so other than sponsored videos and even with sponsored videos i still there's still a choosing going on like i'll get offers from boot companies that I'm not interested in and I'll turn them down just because, and sometimes I look at a product and I don't think it's quality enough to review and I know that the, re the review is gonna be negative. So I tell the company up front, like, you're not gonna like this review. Are you sure you want it to pay for it? And usually they back out and I feel like I at least owe them that much rather than slandering their product on YouTube and getting paid for it. Um, for the general boot videos, I choose them just by whatever's interesting to me, whatever series I wanna do next, whatever, gap in knowledge I have in the boot world or the shoe world, that's usually what I do next. Like I got the sneaker head, we're gonna do sneaker head Saturday. As for big videos, like we've been doing a little bit more recently, since I work with friends, it's I wanna do videos that are interesting to me, that are gonna be fun to film and fun for the guys I work with. Uh, yeah, that's I guess that's how I choose. What is the boot with the most steel in it that you have cut in half? Wait till you see this indestructible boot. This one says, what got you into leather work and starting your own company in your regrets, things you would have done differently? I was raised around leather working. Both my grandpas were leather workers. My dad was a hobbyist leather worker. I was raised around it um, from a small town. So it's it kind of part of the culture to some degree. And um, I started the business as just a way to document the projects I was doing on. 
or doing. And um, what got me into leather working would just be the fact that I couldn't find a decent leather product at a decent price that I could trust. And I was like, I'll just make my own. I, I can do at least better than this JC Penny wallet or whatever it was that I got. Um, any regrets? Not really. I think everything's been really fun. Um, it's a lot of work. I definitely sacrificed a lot of hobbies, uh, relationships, friendships, uh, uh, opportunities for this company. But I wouldn't necessarily call those regrets because I, I'm really happy with where the business is and being able to do the YouTube channel is so much fun. Um, so I don't really have any regrets uh, that I can think of. I'm sure there's tons of little regrets, but no big regrets so far. Why is Utah such a hub for YouTubers? I think Utah is a hub for like entrepreneurship in general. I don't know if it has something to do with the Mormon culture here. Um, I don't know. I don't know. It is weird though because like I've got several friends that are just from I, before they even got popular on any social media platform. We were friends, and then just all of us had found success on YouTube or Instagram or whatever Twitch. It's really strange. Um, I don't know. I don't really know. It is kind of odd. Do you have a plan to create a display wall of all the boots and shoes you've cut in half? I think so. So. Um, if you've watched the other shop tours, this is a temporary shop that we're just renting, but with the success of the YouTube and hopefully over the next few months, we'll have enough money saved up that we can actually buy a shop. And I really want to get a shop that people can come visit and they can check out all the products, all the boots they've cut, all the boots that I've cut in half and just have a place that is a cool little place for people to come visit and for us to make our products and to do events and to film cool videos. Um, I don't even know what the question was. I got stuck in the world of what I want to do with the shop. So in that shop, I'll, I'll have, I'll probably have a big display wall, which will be really fun. So one day, how did you decide you wanted to cut boots in half? So I kind of covered it. Zach from J Rig, everything kind of sparked the idea, but I didn't really even just like, it wasn't like I made a decision. Just, I was like, this channel is going to be about cutting boots in half. I tried cutting a boot in half and it took off and I enjoyed doing it. And so I just kept doing it. Um, so it wasn't this huge planned out thing that was an ingenious idea. It was a it was a seed of an idea planted by Zach that I tried and it took off. And that's that's about as much thought that went into it. Um, I think that's I think that's everything. So thank you guys so much. Kind of a quick Q and A. Indestructible boots next week weekend Saturday. And uh, thank you guys so much for making this YouTube channel possible. It's absolutely insane that we went from. 2,500 2, subscribers to 250,000 subscribers in a year. Like that is insane. And I never planned on it. It is so fun. And I'm really grateful for your guys' support and all of your willingness to support my business and the channel while we try new things, while we come up with new products. And um, yeah, it's really cool. So thank you guys so much. And uh, thanks again to Squarespace and all the other sponsors that make this channel possible so we'll do another q a and shop tour hopefully in a few months because i'm trying to get into that new shop soon within the by summer hopefully so thank you guys see ya